another show here where we're discussing uh, where we're discussing Kathleen Kane, and honestly, this is something that I mean has gone on for so long here in in Pennsylvania, and that honestly, it's I mean. Doesn't seem like it's going to be ending anytime soon. No, definitely soon. not. She's going down with the ship, that's for sure. Yeah, so we are now joined on the air by Angela Columbus, a reporter for The Inquirer, who's here to talk to us a little bit about Kathleen Kane. Angela, thanks for joining us here on Rational Radio. Thanks for having me. So talk to us a little bit about the latest developments in uh, the Attorney General's office. Now a, a subcommittee formed in the Pennsylvania Senate to actually explore the option of removing her from her job. That's right. There's a section of the Constitution that essentially says in order to be the Attorney General of Pennsylvania, you have to be a member of the bar. Um, And as you all know, um, the Supreme Court temporarily suspended uh, Kathleen Kane's law license, which effectively raises the question of what can and can she do any longer as the Attorney General if she can't act as a lawyer? I mean, this isn't a situation where you have um, somebody's law license being taken away and and their job is to do, you know, uh, largely administrative stuff, although she she has made the argument that her job is largely administrative. She is top law enforcement officer in the state. Um, By virtue of her position, she makes lots and lots of legal decisions. And the question now is, what can or can she not do? So that is what this Senate subcommittee is looking at. It has 30 days um, to report back to the Senate with its findings. And essentially what they're looking at is, okay, what can she do, what can't she do, and is she so limited now with a suspended law license that she can't do her job? And then once they complete that review, the decision is going to be made at that point whether they need to go forward with an actual hearing on whether Kathleen Kane can remain in office or not, or, or whether they're going to remove her from office or not. Yeah, so it'll be interesting to see what happens with that. But in the meantime, it sounds like just from reading uh, articles in the in the Inquirer that there is lots of turmoil in the office. There's lots of disagreement in the office. I think what's happening is you're seeing a lot of her top deputies stepping up now and saying, you know, we disagree with your position that you can do. What she said is I can continue to do 98 percent of what I've always done, um, that my job is largely um, administrative and ministerial is how she put it, Um, and that – you know, I can still do that on a day-to-day basis. And her top lawyers are saying, no, we disagree with you. You, We don't think you can do a lot of this, um, uh, of these, perform a lot of the functions of your job. And if you do, you might actually hurt the office and hurt some of the work that we're doing. Yeah, I mean, that's certainly something that I've seen uh, people talking about. But one thing that I think is so interesting in reading all of this is that, I mean, I don't know. I, I mean, she keeps going forward and insisting in investigating all of this uh, stuff, whether it's, you know, justices with pornographic emails right. or, or or anything else. And I just I feel like she has uh, bigger issues to worry about than 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 this. Here's why she's putting out a lot of these emails involving pornography. Part of her criminal defense has been, now whether it's accepted in court or not remains to be seen, but part of her defense in her criminal case has been that she was kind of set up. um, The whole criminal investigation was set up by people who were so deathly scared that she was going to expose their pornographic email ring. Um, And these people, you know, included judges and prosecutors and, as we now know, defense lawyers. I mean, it was pretty fairly widespread. And so she has insisted that this is really relevant stuff and that it's not, you know, it's not just important for the public to know, but that it's an important part of her criminal case. Now, if you talk to lawyers, um, criminal defense lawyers outside of hers, I mean, a lot of them will, will tell you that that it, that will likely not fly as a defense once yeah. a criminal case, you know, does actually come to fruition. And and I mean, just seeing, uh, hearing some of the things that other people are saying, is this like from what you, from what you've seen so far? Is this you know what they've called retaliation against people who have gone against her? 
a lot of people have questioned the timing of her release of these emails. Um, they say that she only releases emails when she, a when she's in trouble and b uh, against uh, people who have done something to make her angry or somehow hurt her. Um, y- you know, there has been a lot of uh, inconsistency in her approach to releasing the emails. The first time we knew about these emails was last year, right around this time, like October, November. And at the time, she only named eight people um, who were involved in the pornographic email exchange. Well, now we know that there were dozens and dozens of people um, you know, who, who were participated in these exchanges. Um, and she has refused to release all of the pornographic emails or all of the emails with inappropriate content. And in fact, my paper has taken her to court um, to get those emails released publicly. And she has fought, her office has fought the public release of it, even as she's saying that she wants all of this information to be made available to the public. Right. Yeah. So that's what I don't get. I mean, she's releasing some of this, but then she says, you know, I won't release yeah, other stuff. It, it's not it's not working. I, I don't get it either. Um and and some of the other things that I just think are interesting. I mean, I'm you know, what do you what do you think is next for her? Well, I think the key thing for her, at least in the immediate near future, is what the Senate committee does because if they find that she can't really continue to function in any real way as the attorney general, that could lead to them making the decision to move forward with a formal, you know, removal procedure yeah. and, and a hearing. And that could just be a circus that you will, you know, see playing out in, in, in early December if that goes there, if they go there. If they don't, um, what we know is her, her, both her lawyers and Montgomery County prosecutors who have charged her criminally have said that they believe that her criminal trial could come as early as, um, you know, maybe January or February of next year. Wow. I mean, you know, is in talking to people, if, if you're able to get a if you were able to get a sense of this is her. I mean, I assume her approval rating is like in the tank. Yeah, it's got to be oh, so low at, at this point. It wasn't even good to begin with. Yeah. I mean, and there was a thing I saw. Uh, on, I believe it was the morning call from uh, from Allentown, and it said in February of last year that uh, her approval rating was twenty six percent. Yeah, her approval ratings have really fallen in the last eighteen months. Um, you know, since the, there's been this real public kind of feuding going on between her and former prosecutors in her office, um, and what she has said is, uh, which is really sort of interesting, she's on the one hand she says um, I'm, you know, staying in office, um, I'm fighting these criminal charges, and I'm going to remain the attorney general, and not only that, I'm going to run for reelection in 2016 because you know her term is up. Um, uh, in the beginning of yeah. 2017, she'd have to run next year. But for the first time, she also signaled about a month ago that she doesn't know now whether she can even run because she has a suspended license and because the state constitution requires you to be a member of the bar. Um, so, you know, she has um, – her, her future is really, really uncertain. And, um, you know, I don't know that the – her message or necessarily the other side's message is penetrating with the public all that much. Yeah. I mean, I just think it's so interesting that even with all of this going on, she still came out and said, you know, I think I'm going to run for re-election. You know, I think this is something good that I should do. It's a bold move by her. You know, yeah. she said that she wants to be a pillar of strength to her kids and things like yeah. that um, right. uh, for right. this whole, you know, and I. I, I wanted to know, like, how, how how much are candidates for next year going to come and use this as a tactic of their own to instore integrity? Is it, you think it's going to be a, a major factor in their in their campaign? I think you're going to hear some of that, quite a bit of that. I mean, first off, going back to what you said, I mean, I, I think she's going to have a really tough time raising money if yeah, she decides definitely. Uh, to formally run. Um, and, you know, the first time she ran, a lot of her money came from her, um, at the time, husband. It was all family money. Um, and she doesn't have that anymore. So, it, you know, she would really have to go out and make a, a big, big fundraising effort, which, uh, given the circumstances, is going to be difficult. 
you know, and then what you just said is a very important factor. I mean, A, she might have, she might face a Democrat um, who might primary her. Um, and if that happens, you'll definitely see that person raising issues of integrity and not using the office for mm-hmm. personal purposes and that sort of thing. And, you know, talking about the morale being destroyed and in the office. Um, but she'll also, if you know, if she survives a primary, she'll also have to, um, you know, deal with that with Republicans who yeah. are sort of starting to line up uh, to run against her. And I think one of the most interesting things uh, that was pointed out is that uh, initially when she was running um, back in back in 2012, that, um, you know, they were people said, you know, she just doesn't have the experience. I mean, she was an assistant district attorney in Lackawanna County, and right. they all said, you know, I just think she's overshooting for going for attorney general. Right. And and. And now maybe they're saying, "Hey, look, I maybe was it's, right." Maybe it's it's true. You yeah. Know, maybe she bought a bit off more than she could chew. That has definitely been a criticism we've heard time and time again. <clears throat> she could probably counter some of that, saying, "Look, I've had four years in office now. I know how to run this office. I understand it's the ins and outs of the job." But yeah. there's been so much other noise that I, I think that'll be a really hard message for her to sell and have it impact with the public yeah and even you know just kind of one last thing to wrap this up if she is uh acquitted in montgomery county and right. she she is not reelected, i mean i i don't know what uh, even as a future for her future going forward i don't know if there would be anywhere that would that would take her back you know as a private law firm or even if she went back to working for the government as a district attorney i mean i feel like you know getting reelected as a district attorney just now given her record as attorney general would be near impossible right and she also has to deal with the uh, law license right yeah exactly issue. and um, and that's something she's going to have to work out yeah, and so I just think the whole future surrounding this is so just murky. But for the time being, it's I feel I think people are just tired yeah, of hearing. Yeah, they're tired of hearing it. Kathleen, I mean, we on here on the show, we've had so yeah. many shows primarily focused around this exact issue, and I think people are just tired of it. I feel like it's a drama playing out in Harrisburg right now. <laughs> exactly. That is true. Yeah. All right. Well, Angela, thank you so much for joining yeah. us here today. Thanks for having me. No problem. Have a good one. You too. Take care. Thanks. So I just think, you know, so interesting. It is. I mean, just this whole Kathleen Kane scandal, you know, all of it that's going on right now. We've talked about it so much. It's almost like the whole Benghazi scandal with Hillary. You know, everyone was just tired of hearing it, you know, and, it, it, you know, we just we want to move on. We want a new person in office to take control and set things right. And it's time to move on. Yeah. Kathleen Kane needs to, you know. Well, she's not going to resign because she's just. She too said stubborn. she wants to run for re-election. Just, it's, uh, she's buried. Come on, she, she's digging her own grave there. You know, yeah. she's, she's going to get just destroyed at, at, at debates and and all that. She's just going to get destroyed by her competition. Um, and you, you hinted at this. Any any step that she takes after this is just going to be a step down. What is she going to go from attorney general to uh, assistant DA? I yeah, mean, right. It, it's just not going to make any sense. Yeah, I know. I think just it's so everything surrounding it is so uncertain. And yeah. just, you know, so many questions. So many still question remain. marks everywhere. And, and like Angel said, you know, people question the timing of the release of these emails. Mm-hmm. It's not, I mean, it would be one thing if she released, you know, 10 every single day for, you know, four weeks mm-hmm. or whatever. But she, you know, you go maybe two months without release and then you get a huge release yeah, at yeah, one point. Yeah. And everybody's like, you know, why? 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 I mean, yeah. you know, if, you have, if you're just doing it to release them, why don't you just do it gradually yeah, or just or, all at all once? All at once. All at once. Why not just get it all out in the air right. or out in the open? Yeah. So I, I I don't know. The, she just she should have resigned yeah. long, long long ago. And you know it now now she's she shot herself in the foot, and I think her career is in the in the in the toilet because of it.